welcome to the Marching Arts Monthly Webinar. Richard Sacedo here with Wendy Greenwell, and we are at Fisher's High School, as we've been apt to do a couple times this season. And I'm standing next to the director uh, of the marching band for Fisher's High School, Chad Kohler, uh, whose band is getting ready to go to Grand Nationals. I believe they perform on Friday. Chad, can you tell us just a little bit about what's going on with the group right now, what you guys are thinking as you're preparing for Friday? I mean, first of all, we're really excited to be here, um, especially after the past couple of years. Um, just the, the growth of the ensemble has really increased. Um, you know, we have 90 freshmen this year, so it's been wow. kind of an insurgent of like really training from the ground up. And the, the great thing about that is that with uh, as many young people as there are, uh, we are able to, to teach correctly. And so even on this day, two days before we perform for prelims, we're kind of dialing back and we're going to our hot spots on this day and, and tomorrow. And we're just kind of just uh, going back to the fundamentals. We're going back to the harmony director. We're tuning chords. We're slowing things down. We're asking students to not play. We're asking them to count. We're asking them to duck. We're asking them to just think about their feet and then think about the music and then kind of putting it back together. So it's not just doing reps for, rep, for reps sake, but just really trying to build that consistency and pointing them back to their fundamental training. So Chad, would you agree that, you know, a lot of us as directors, sometimes when we get close to uh, a big competition like this, we tend to just do reps to get the kids comfortable instead of really cleaning, right? Really getting down and getting a few more things taken care of. Um, I mean, do you feel, do you agree with that? Absolutely. I, I feel doing uh, reps for rep sakes doesn't help. And there's so many inconsistencies that are built, whether you go from the asphalt to the turf or it's cold and it's like, beautiful right now in Indianapolis. Um, weather affects that with tuning. So it's always very important to go back and, 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 and even do some tape study with the staff. And, meet with the staff after every rehearsal and say what is not working, what is working well, and, and designing and, and, and creating a plan for the next rehearsal. So that way we don't miss anything. And we owe it to ourselves uh, to not apologize for excellence and make sure that the kids understand what it means to be excellent. Not, and not to be perfect, because nobody's perfect, right? But to really, really to go for that extra level. And if we're here doing all this work and all this time, all this blood, sweat, and tears, we want to make sure that it's, it's just at the best that we could possibly perform. Fantastic. I'm just going to ask you one more question, then I'll let you get back to rehearsal because I'm sure you're, you're anxious to get back to the kids. What are you most excited about, about this group of kids as you take them down to Indianapolis? This group of students this year, we've not had a whole lot of drama. We've not had the typical, I don't feel like being here. I don't know what we're doing this for. I feel like everybody's in it and I feel like everybody wants to be incredible. And as I said before, because we have so many young people, when the first time they went to Lucas Oil and performed at the Indy Super Regional, they saw bands that were incredible, and they were like, well, why can't we be like them, too? So I just feel like they've got that hunger, they've got that appetite, and I just can't wait to see what they do on Friday and Saturday. Chad Kohler, thank you so much for taking the time with us, and best of luck to you guys on Friday at Grand National. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck to everybody else. Thanks. All right, Randy, I'm going to turn it back over to you, man. I know you're uh, out on the parking lot looking over... Uh, what's going on with the group right now. So uh, what are you seeing out there, man? Well, the thing that's really interesting is that, you know, as Chad said, they're kind of se sequencing back to fundamentals and, and they're also split out the way you would be at the beginning of the season. That's why you're just seeing basically the woodwinds and the battery and front ensemble. The brass just came out. They're gonna be out here uh, in full ensemble in just a couple of minutes. But, you know, the brass were inside working on tuning chords and tuning melodies. and you know, working with the harmony director. So they're, they're really, you know, still kind of going back to those fundamental roots of just really getting down to basics and slowing things down and just slowing the kids' heads down a little bit so that they can focus on the right things to make things better as opposed to just running big chunks on them. Very cool. And, um, I, you know, I've had the good fortune, Randy, as, as you have as well, to be out here for some rehearsals and um, to watch this band and watch this staff develop over the last few years has been really, really amazing. I mean, I really think these folks are doing it the right way. Uh, as you mentioned, they're really focusing on fundamentals. Um, they're very, very positive with the kids. Uh, they want to make sure they feel confident uh, and ready to go. So I just, uh, it's been really neat to watch this group rehearse. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, the other thing is, is that the directors are learners too. So they're learning with the kids. Um, not everybody is, 
as you know, is always willing to do that as uh, experienced teachers. And, you know, Chris and Chad are both experienced teachers and they're still willing to listen as well as the rest of the staff to, to us two old farts occasionally give them some feedback and, you know, they actually try to apply it and it, and it is making a difference in terms of their processes and how they go about things. So that's, that's exciting for them. Yeah, I'll say another great thing about the staff, Randy, is uh, they kind of check their egos at the door. You know, the fact that they do let some old folks like us come in every once in a while and give them some <laughs> advice and they actually do listen and they actually try to do those things. It's pretty cool. And, you know, and I would remind all the directors out there, even if you're getting close to your final performance of the year, the way that these guys are, it's so important to be positive, uh, to make sure that your kids have a great, confident feeling going into those last performances. And uh, I'm thrilled for these guys. I think these kids are, are ready to go, but this staff has been willing to learn for the last few years. They keep getting better and better and better because they keep studying the art. You know, they keep studying the activity and they keep trying to learn um, from watching others and from listening to experienced folks. And it's been just really fun to be around this group. Yeah, it sure has. And you know, it really does for a big week like this, it does come down to having a calming presence. And I think that they rely, you know, on their training and everything that they've learned and they're, they've connected the dots. And now it's just a matter of apply, continuing to apply it to the program. And that's why they're, you know, they're getting the reps in, but as you'll see, they're also detailing. And that's, that's what makes the world a difference, especially as you get into the final week of the season and you're trying to get as many, you know, things taken care of as possible. Boy, um, if you're in Indiana this week for Grand Nationals, the good news is if you're here today, it's over 70 degrees, where normally it could be snowing right now. So uh, we're really kind of counting our blessings. It's supposed to be pretty nice again tomorrow, um, but then I know that it's supposed to start getting cold again as we get to near the end of the week. So it's been kind of nice to have this nice weather this week. Yeah, it's been very uh, California-like. It definitely is today. It's about 72 degrees and makes things a lot easier. You know, and Richard, let's talk about that for a second because we know that there are groups that have to rehearse in a, a not-so-great environment um, from, a, from a climate standpoint. So how do they, how do they deal with that? You know, how did you deal with that when you have really cold temperatures? I know what I did um, when it comes to playing. Yeah, I think that's, it is a tough situation for a, a lot of folks, especially if you're in a cold environment, uh, which, you know, there are some folks, uh, you know, I, I know our friends from uh, American Fork, um, places uh, that tend to get cold earlier in the season, they're dealing with um, some of the colder weather. And so I think, um, Randy, I, I don't know exactly what you guys did, but you know, when I was at Carmel, we would, we would just go ahead and do some indoor rehearsals. Uh, since we knew that our last couple of performances were going to be indoors anyway, um, even if we just stood and played indoors, we still felt that that was a little bit better than coming out in the cold, especially if it's like under 40 degrees and trying to play in that weather. Now, did we do it occasionally? Yeah, we had to because we had to make sure the kids still had some experience of marching and playing, but we would kind of shy away from that. We would tend to do more visual on the cold days and then we go inside. To rehearse our playing. I don't know if you did stuff like that or not. Yeah, we did because if it got under 40 degrees and we were going to be going inside the Lucas or the old RCA dome, it's just pointless to have the, the lips swell up because of the cold and all that stuff and then have that disable you the rest of the week. So it made more sense to clean drill outside, play inside, and um, it just always seemed to make more sense. Now, if you're in Colorado and you're used to that kind of stuff that's a whole different story um, but 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 being uh, you know a lot of these grand national bands you know they know they're going to be playing inside so just have to be careful about how much you play outside under 40 degrees because it can be pretty pretty bad for your chops yeah and I know that um, some of the groups that are here in Indianapolis now are, have already found indoor facilities to rehearse I know um, um, our friends at Carmel are going to uh, Grand Park um, up in Westfield tonight for their rehearsal, the big facility there. Uh, and I know that, uh, you know, the Colts facility is sometimes used. Even the convention center uh, 
uh, and Indianapolis is being used. So uh, that's one of the cool things about Grand Nationals being in this area is there are some nice indoor facilities that you can use. But like Randy was saying, folks, if you're outdoors and you're dealing with the cold, be really careful with your chops uh, of your players because, man, you can really create some problems. Uh, they'll start to change what they're doing, and we certainly don't want that the last few days before uh, our most important competitions. Absolutely. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us for this uh, live webinar. Uh, we hope you got something out of it. We, we certainly uh, appreciate you attending these. And uh, if you're if you still got some time left in your season, uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you out there and best wishes as you finish it up. Yeah, good luck, everyone. I hope that you um, have wonderful ends of your seasons. And um, it's been great for us to be able to go um, along for part of the ride. So thanks for letting us be there as well. And good luck to everyone. Take care, everybody.